Hey guys, what's up? It's Ray here, and welcome back to my channel. As you guys know, or maybe not know, these are Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils. These are some of my absolute most favorite colored pencils around. I have used them in so many videos, I have used them for so many drawings, and truly, truly, truly for a very long time, when it came to art supplies, colored pencils, specifically Prismacolors, were my go-to. But there have been internet rumors pretty much stemming about the quality of these colored pencils. <laughs> and just general concern over the quality over the past few years of these colored pencils. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna do something that has never been done on YouTube before. I have purchased every single one of Prismacolor Premier's major time periods, starting from the 1930s, it's very early inception, all the way up until modern day 2019. And I am going to compare them together and we're gonna see if there truly is a difference between Prismacolor past, present, and future. So if you are new here and you would like to join the revolution, hit that subscribe button. And if you already are a subscriber, please remember to hit the notification bell. That way you can get notified of all my videos. So yeah, with that being said, guys, let's get started, shall we? <coughs> I'm sorry. Usually I just like hit the camera, but I'm not close enough, so I'm to scooch. All right, for contestant number one, we're going to have to go all the way back to 1939 when Eagle Pencil Company released their very first colored pencil, Prismacolor Premier Soft Lead Colored Pencils. What you are looking at right now are the very first Prismacolors to ever exist. And honestly, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with how modern these colored pencils look. I mean, that's a very sleek design if you ask me. And for these pencils being as old as they are, I'd have to say they're in pretty decent condition. And sadly, they didn't come with the original packaging, but here is an image that I pulled from Google, and I will link that website down below. Next up, we are going to be going between the 60s and the 80s, when Barrel Pencil Company bought out Eagle Pencil Company, and oh my god, the packaging on this is magical. Plus, it matches my nails. Now these ones I have a lot of, I mean this was the 48 pack, it's a little bit less than 48, but man I have a very great selection of colors. And like the first generation, these are in incredible condition, I can't believe I found these. But I will have to say, you can definitely tell they, they just look old, you know, like they have like an old font on them. And I'm kind of curious to see like how well they'll hold up to modern day 2019 synthetic pigments, you know? Now we're gonna fast forward to the 90s, where I might age myself, but I'm alive at this point. And this is when Newell Rubbermaid, the Rubbermaid Company, <laughs> this is when they bought out Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils. And we're able to date these back to 1999, and yes, at this point, they are currently made in the United States of America. And the packaging on this, oh my god, does it scream the 90s. And honestly, I am here for it. Like, I love, obviously, look at my nails. Again, I love everything bright and, like, 90s vaporwave aesthetics. So I'm very happy about these ones. But I do have to say, the whole entire time I filmed this video, I was struggling with the sturdiness of the packaging. Like, they would all fall out every five seconds, and that was very frustrating. And plus, the color selection for this wasn't too great. I was missing a lot of essential colors, and basically I had a lot of like weird secondary colors, so eh, I guess I wasn't too happy with them. And now this brings us to modern day 2019 Prismacolor. And currently, in 2019, as you're hearing this right now, the factory is in Mexico. And as far as I'm able to date it, when they moved to Mexico is where all the theories that the quality dropped. And today, we're gonna see if that's true, if it really did drop because they moved. All right, so I did some digging, and according to VanillaArtsBlog.com, I will leave it down below, one of the biggest concerns is off-center color cores. So basically, like, every time you sharpen it, it's off-center, so it breaks really easily. And I guess I've never just paid attention to this specific detail before, but I mean, when you get the modern-day Prismacolors, lo and behold, yes, they are off-center, which, again, can lead to a lot of breakage. Now, to play devil's advocate, some of the older ones also had off-center cores, so it might not be a modern Prismacolor problem, but just in general a Prismacolor thing. And by the way, can we talk about that green? 
And you know, even some of my good and trusty old Crayola colored pencils, I even found a few of those that were slightly off center. So it might just be a thing that happens with colored pencils. You know, like the machine while making them might just hit wrong. Now this test specifically made me want to make this whole entire video because this is what truly piqued my curiosity when it came to old versus modern day Prismacolor colored pencils. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my opinion, they're kind of lit now, you know what I'm saying? So if they were better back then, how cool would that be to test it out? And plus, it's important to know that a lot can change in that time, like a lot of technology, a lot of pigments can change, synthetic pigments, and I truly think that if we were going to see a difference, it would be here. And surprise, surprise, not really much has changed. I mean, especially when you look at the whites, you look at the blacks. I mean, the pigment has always been there, and even for the pencils being that old, I was genuinely, genuinely impressed with how well they performed. So yeah, I would say over the course of the literal 70 years, uh, they've always worked really well, and they were always very pigmented. You go, Glenn Coco. Okay, at this point, get your tinfoil hats on because this is where everything went to hell. <laughs> Modern day Prismacolors are notorious for breaking just all the time. Like one quick Google search and you'll see, it's, it's like a whole thing. So I get to blending the two colors and pretty much instantly, I'm like, wow, it's actually really hard to blend these from the 80s back. So I start thinking to myself, like, wow, it's a completely different formula. I better test it out to see if it really is or not. And lo and behold, these pencils aren't layering on top of each other, which is something I've never had happen to me with Prismacolors before. Example A, 2019 Prismacolor, buttery smooth. The 90s Prismacolor, buttery smooth. But when you look at Faber-Castell, it has trouble layering because it's a harder formula. And just to like triple check to make sure I'm not crazy, I pressed my new Prismacolors against a paper to see how soft it was, which it destroyed the lead. And if you try to do the same thing with the old Prismacolors, it ain't happening. Just like it ain't happening with modern day Faber-Castells. Them suckers are so incredibly hard. So, class, I think we just solved a huge internet mystery. Sometime between the 80s and the 90s, Prismacolor changed up their formula to be drastically softer. And because the formula changed, people weren't used to it, they didn't say anything about it, and that's why we started seeing all these problems. It's not because Mexico, it's not because the quality went down, it's because, in my crackpot theory, they changed the formula and didn't say anything. Now we have arrived to the most important test out of all the other tests, and that's the drawing test. And what better way to test a drawing than do the exact same thing side by side right next to each other with all the exact same colors. Okay, are you guys ready to see the final result between the old and the new? Drum roll, please. Da, 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 da. It's very, very subtle in the differences, but there are differences. For example, the highlights in the new version, they just pop out that much more than the old version. If you zoom in closely, you can definitely see that there's like a texture between the old and the new. And with the new Prismacolors, the pigment kind of like slid everywhere, which is something you don't see with the old ones. And I feel like unless you have like kind of a trained eye on Prismacolors, you wouldn't notice. And am I saying a harder formula is bad? No, not, oh, no, not by any means. I don't think it's bad at all. I think it's just different preferences. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much again for turning into this versus video. If you would like to see more, I will leave a playlist down below. And uh, yeah, with that being said, guys, thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you next video. Bye.